It was hard. And I'll tell you, it was hard. But in the back of my mind, I could see that something isn't right here. Gerald E. Talbot grew up in the state of Maine. There was prejudice and discrimination. And I was running into it. It wasn't until recently that Talbot regained his faith after finding peace with his past struggles. I lost my belief in God because of what we went through. Can you tell me what it was like that there were no professional jobs at the time, no black police officers, no black firefighters, no black nurses? What was that like for you? I'm a light-skinned black, and the people that hired me did not know what I was. They didn't know whether I was a Negro or whether I was white. But when they found it out, because they, if, if they ever asked, they did ask, they asked, what are you? Two days later, I was gone. I didn't have a job anymore. And when you say you had to take that, I mean, what kind of emotional toll did that take on you to know that you were African-American, you did, you were light-skinned, you looked a certain way, but once employers found out that you were African-American, you lost your job, how did that affect you? I am a black American. I'm proud of that, so I never have tried to get over that by saying, oh, well, I am white, or I am a Native American. I'm proud to be who I am. As a young man, Talbot helped bring the NAACP to Portland, where he became president of the organization. He was also invited to participate in the March on Washington with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. To remind America of the fierce urgency of now. My heart was coming out. It was just the most glorious time I think I have ever been. We were fighting for ourselves. We were fighting because we were black. And we had some things that we, could, we didn't have. What was it like being the first black person on the Le Maine legislature? It was hard. I didn't know anything about the legislature, but then I learned. And they learned. The legislature learned too. They created a, a different organization, which is Human Rights, and they made me a, a member of the Civil Rights Organization. Nearly 50 years later, his daughter Rachel Talbot Ross went on to become the very first black woman in the state legislature. We always got room to move ahead, but sometimes it takes longer than others. But some, some, but you have to take you have to take strides in how well you're doing. Before I got there, it was 152 years. Hands up! Don't shoot! Talk about what's happening today with the Black Lives Matter movement. What are your thoughts on what's happening? I love Black Lives Matter. It does matter. But I think everybody's life, life matter, and then we have to we have to talk about that. I'm older today. I can't do what I used to do. I'd like to. I'd love to. But I can't. I'm 89 years old. If you didn't have any support from white people during the Civil Rights Movement, you wouldn't have a lot of support here in Maine. Black Lives Matter is the same way because the state is mostly a white state. We had to grow to the point where white people supported us. Because you don't have a lot of black people here. And if you don't get people to support you, you don't have anybody. We as people have to support each other. We have to understand each other. When it comes to advice for young people growing up today, here's what Talbot had to say. Whatever education you can get, you take it. Always have respect for everybody. Martin Luther King said that. Always have respect for everybody.